Hey everyone, I'm Chris from Felgo and in this video we'll highlight some of the main features of the Felgo SDK and also some best practices for mobile and desktop app development. The key part of Felgo is you have a single code base but still a native and responsive user experience on each platform. For example, um, the navigation which you would define with the navigation object and then multiple navigation items um, let you define a native navigation and it looks different depending on which platform you run it on. So in this GIF image here, a lot of things are happening um, and I would like to highlight those. So on left is how this app on the, um, how this source code would look on iOS and on the right how it would look like on Android. So you see, for example, on iOS on the bottom, you have the four tabs, which would be four navigation items. But on Android, the tabs are instead in the navigation drawer without you needing to like define that. You know, the SDK handles this for you. Then for navigation between pages, on iOS, you see when the item is clicked, the uh, animation happens and you can, like as a user would expect, do the drag um, to navigate back gesture. And on Android, you have the back navigation with the back button and in the navigation bar on top. Um, so this is how it works by default. It is also fully customizable if you want the navigation draw on iOS or the tabs on Android, that is also possible. And for developing on desktop, you get to choose how to, how to for example, um, here the iOS theme is simulated on desktop and you can also resize the, the window and you see how it would look like on different screen sizes. You see here, once the screen has a particularly large size that we are now on a tablet device, it switches automatically to a two column layout. So you have the master detail navigation, not with one, but with two columns without needing to add any extra code to this. And when you click an item, then the detail page appears on the right. Um, this, uh, there are more things you can do here, which some of these will see during the live environment. Let's see how the notch so, um, or display cutout support works. So newer phones like the iPhone X have display cutouts. So you have to uh, define your UI code so that something like you see here doesn't happen where the list items are cut off by the cutout. And Felgo offers some very easy to integrate solutions for this. I won't go into detail here because there is no time, but just know that it's possible. Also, you should separate your data model and view code because otherwise uh, the app is uh, your app source code just becomes unmaintainable after some time. So, should, so for uh, for each of these blocks here, it would be a single source file, one with only pure data and others with only pure UI code. Um, okay, so how does the native performance work? Everything is everything has a C++ backend. The QML code is interpreted by the engine and a tree of C++ objects is built and then everything runs with native performance. And another feature of the Felgo SDK is QML hot reload, which allows you during development to preview your code changes instantly. Every time you save your code, you can have your development app and you see the code change applied immediately. This works on your desktop um, environment but also there are mobile apps that perform hot reload and preview your code during development. The way this works is we need we don't need to go into detail here. There is a detailed webinar from us that you can watch where we uh, highlight how this works behind the scenes. But the key part is there is the live client, which is an app you can download to your Android or iOS device, or also just start on your desktop computer. And then the live server runs besides your development environment host your source code and whenever a QML file or an asset changes, sends it to the live client and your code changes are applied immediately. So let's see how this looks. So here is me developing an app. Like you start completely empty, add a navigation stack to it. You see the navigation by peers. I had a page with the title my page. And whenever I save the code, the code changes applied immediately. I change to a list page with 100 list entries. You see the list entries appear. Del uh, define the delegate, which is the list item, to have a text of item number with the index. And the list items appear. I can scroll through the list and keep developing my code without ever needing to restart. So for example here, 
I change the title to my list page and it applies automatically while not even having to like scroll to the bottom or restart or anything. And this supports basically anything you can do with the SDK during development. I've already mentioned there is something called the plugins where you can integrate native platform SDKs. As you see here, for example, you can use the Google Firebase services or Zoomla, which uh, add in-app purchases to your app. You can use Facebook and Google Analytics and many more. And the, the cool part about this is it uses the, the QML API just as you would add UI to your app, you add the native, plat, uh, native plugin SDKs with QML. Here is a quick example how you would add the Facebook SDK to your app. Um, you just add the Facebook node anywhere in your code, usually somewhere globally. Define your app ID, define your Facebook permissions. For example, I want to read the user's email, friends. And then I can just call fetch user details. And in a separate handler that I'm not showing here, you would be able to access the user um, properties, obviously after they, like in the app, um, accept the Facebook, um, the UI would pop up and they accept the Facebook or they don't. Or you can uh, request the user's friend list with the field's ID name and picture. And each of these plugins you see here has a QML API like the one for Facebook. Um, to, and this works cross-platform again, so it uses the, the completely native Android or iOS Facebook SDK or for the other plugins, other native SDKs. All right, that's it for this video. If you want to learn more and also see a live coding demo of how this works in action, please check out the full webinar linked below. If you want to see more, please like the video and subscribe and we will see you next time.